Thank you, Madam, for being with us today. And uh, we, I'm sure we'll have a very enriching discussion today. Thank you. So much. Now, the first thing that people uh, want to know is like, what is, what do we understand by <coughs> trafficking really? What is trafficking? Yeah. Actually, this word is not, was not so popular earlier. We, it really came into existence after the Palermo Protocol, which was in 2000, the United Nations. They defined trafficking for the first time as something which is, uh, you know, has been uh, being undertaken through fraud, through cheat, through coercion, through uh, forced labor. And this is how trafficking has happened. Now, people who are venturing out in search of livelihood options. So they are uh, basically they are trying to find some kind of job. So then actually they leave their own areas of residence and they go out. So they become naturally vulnerable and then uh, people try to you know capture these as the prey sort of and then they, uh, they exploit them in, in areas which are uh, other than their own places of residence. So this is what trafficking that it is through fraud, through cheat but if I uh, read out the Palermo protocol it's a big long paragraph yes. so I'm not going into the details mm -hmm. of that but yes. basically through fraud, through cheat and through uh, Another one that you were talking about, uh, we said we talked about these children, uh, minors that were, you know, kept in the tanks. Yeah, they were in, in Delhi only uh, in the red light areas. The raids are conducted with the knowledge of the authorities, and it's kept absolutely a secret. Uh, nobody gets to know, excepting the NGO, the the police, the officials who conduct the raid, mm -hmm. the ministry, and that's it very few people and despite that they get to know that the middle woman the lady of the brothels mm. she gets to know much before even the police is involved even if the police gets to know <laughs> so she takes these uh, you know the trafficked victims whoever they are all below 18 mostly mm. and they are taken up and they are all thin so six yeah. of them can get inside one water tank so that is how you know they are pushed into the roof, rooftop, mm -hmm. and they are hiding there. So they, they live there like that for almost one day or 24, not 24 hours, but almost 20 hours. They are sitting inside the water. Sometimes they are they escape, they they are not taken, but sometimes the raid is so good that they pull them out. You know, most of us understand trafficking as sexual uh, form of uh, yeah. But I think there might be more forms of trafficking than not only sexual. What are yeah, actually only? when you say trafficking, we are not only talking of the women and the children and the girls. We are talking about men, we are talking about young boys, we are talking about uh, the old people also sometimes. So they, there are a wide range of trafficking. Trafficking mm -hmm. is done for sexual exploitation, for bonded labors, forced labor. This is a term which is not been recognized by SARC. But forced labor is now trying to get it uh, being recognized. There's some discussion going on. And then, of course, sexual exploitation is one of the most important ones as far as women is concerned. Young target group is the young woman and the child, the girl child. So do we have any, you know, what kind of data do we have on this? Do we have anything that shows yeah. us how much uh, is happening around See, the there world? is no, no magnitude that can be, uh, some say um, 300,000 million, some say, you know, um, crores or I don't know how many you you quoted one figure from ILO, ILO I can quote that. you figures from UN UNODC I can quote you figures from IOM and so many other organizations they are all working on this yeah. but you know they're all different because nothing is reported everything is not reported properly so documentation okay. is one thing that one cannot uh, you know visualize mm -hmm. but you can imagine it is definitely in millions. It is not less than that. It is in millions and millions. And this is the second largest uh, illegal trade after uh, arms and ammunition. Where, do, where is drugs? Drugs are also there. Arms, ammunition and drugs. They are the okay. top most. They are the, top. They are the first. Okay. And then the second uh, level you have this uh, human, human trafficking. Okay. Yeah. The international norms that you were mentioning that, yeah. so do you, I mean, the, do you think that we need to strengthen the norms or the implementation of the norms or what is it? Yeah, you actually you have the Palermo protocol, 
which is basically consisting of three parts mm -hmm. that is protocol to prevent, uh, to suppress and punish. Okay. These are the three things. Mm -hmm. And India is a signatory to all the three. That is to the Palermo Protocol mm -hmm. as you know at the uh, higher level. But if you are a signatory to that Palermo Protocol, you got to keep your instruments in order so that you show that we are doing that. So uh, one interesting thing is US always comes out with you know uh, the different levels of trafficking, especially sexual trafficking okay. and other trafficking. They keep this record and India today is put in the tier 2. Tier 2. Tier 2. There are different tiers. Okay. Tier 1 is the most safest that they are doing good work. Okay. Tier 2 is not so good. Tier 3 is the worst. But there is another one called tier 2 watch list. So you are on the bottom portion of tier 2. Okay. So we are that in tier we, 2. We are in tier 2 but yes. We are doing we, something that we, means. Yeah. Yeah. So, you it's know, not good enough. Not, not good enough, but we, we are doing, we are making an attempt. We have made some kind of a, you know, I was mentioning this earlier, the article 8 and article 20 of the Ministry of Home Affairs, where the trafficked uh, person who was nabbed in the border, mm -hmm. he was, he or she was considered to be a culprit, but now they are considered as a victim. So that makes a lot that, of that difference. Mindset changes. Yeah. So you are doing that and then there are many such instances where police officers, border security forces also they have been maintaining. They are also getting the training so they are able to implement many of the laws themselves. So that. that. So we will just move to the next one where you have done this excellent mapping for vulnerabilities. Yeah. So um, we have this map and uh, so. we were just wondering about well, this is sexual trafficking that you are talking about yeah. and uh, if we could just talk about the regions that are the sources that are absolutely uh, you have demarcated so very well. Mm -hmm. Actually, do you think uh, these regions uh, are? You know, these, uh, this was uh, one of the studies where we tried to capture how far the UN woman has been funding this for the last 10 or 12 years. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, till 2009 or 2010. So we try to capture what has been the output. Has it really trickled down to the lowest level? Has the trafficking been curbed? Mm -hmm. Or is, are the you know awareness program in place? So there were different instruments that we had to measure. Mm -hmm. So on the basis of that, we uh, interviewed for about, uh, I think about 80, 85 uh, NGOs across South Asia. Okay. And these NGOs, they narrated their uh, stories and from all this together, mm -hmm. we uh, identified, you can see in the map, you can identify the source areas mm -hmm. and the demand areas, the halt areas, the route and the market, the, the demand areas basically. So okay. this map will clearly demarcate, you will see it's the border areas, Indo-Nepal. Indo Bangladesh, mm -hmm. you will see they are very vulnerable. They are the yeah, ones yeah, which are yeah, uh, very yeah, dark shade. Yeah, so yeah. they are the ones from where you get the source mm -hmm. because people try to get inside to get in search of jobs and get caught. Mm -hmm. So, but again, I repeat, all migration does not mean trafficking. Okay. Now, uh, we just wanted to talk about uh, legalization of prostitution. You know, we discussed uh, about this. about. Would it be a good idea to legalize prostitution in India in the way many countries have yeah. uh, legalized it? And how is it beneficial for the victims to be uh, in a legalized pro profession? Actually, there is a big discussion, debate going on for the last so many, I think, four, five years or so. Mm -hmm. uh, SAC is also uh, our regional cooperation uh, of the South Asian countries. There also the coalition is trying to discuss this about it but so far India has not uh, you know legalized prostitution it is an illegal trade but personally based on my experiences I feel if they are above 18 or mm. particular age I think 20 or whatever age you would like to put it and then they are they should be allowed to do prostitution it should be legal okay. because otherwise also they are being exploited by the middle woman in the brothels they do not get their whole pay which they earn from the you know customers mm -hmm. they have to pay for their uh, living they have to pay for their uh, whatever um, cosmetics and they have to pay for their uh, any time they fall ill 
so they have to pay for their health mm -hmm. their medical everything so they hardly are, are able to get something so my final question to you would be uh, what are the reasons what are the basic reasons if we can get to the the crux of it you know yeah. how can we stop uh, trafficking especially child trafficking or i mean you're saying implementation is one mm. way to punish the culprits to make it stringent mm. to catch them mm. you know that's one way how about the reasons where See. parents are trying to push their children out you know in those situations what is it that one, no, I, one can do i don't think this is a trade which will ever stop you cannot control it you cannot do what no matter how much you do whatever research but you can curb it to a large extent you can reduce the disturbance the uh, the distraught positions of these traffic victims you can make them more comfortable but definitely this is a thing that is carrying on over history so it's difficult to really completely remove it in the society it will take uh, generations together and that too you would have to have a conscience uh, you know people who are very conscious and that kind of population too but what we can do is we can reduce it we can create the awareness we can uh, do this implementation of training programs we can do the implementation the ngos they need to know about the various schemes we have the jawahar rozgar yojana is there the ujwala the swadhar all these things are there existing where the traffic victims can be easily yeah, you know be, integrated be into that yeah they will be mainstream yeah mainstream but they hardly know about it it was uh, one of the organizations i was mentioning earlier about the manav seva sanstha yeah. where they have been doing this work and the most dalit group that is the yeah. mahadalit they are called okay. which is in the indo nepal border they have done wonderful job they have got their own land they have got their uh, house through jawahar rozgar yojana they have taken that they have combined it they have linked it and they made their own house and those people there i talked to the mahadalits who were there a group of 20 25 people they said we our community you will never find a single woman who there is violence against women and uh, the trafficking comes under violence against women the wow and therefore you will never find any woman here who's been trafficked hum karne nahi dete ho nahi dete humko chahiye nahi we have our own house we have our own everything what for we we will do this and we don't allow we don't allow our women to uh, get trafficked nor do they go outside without knowing anything so you know there are many schemes like that going on and i think uh, ngos are doing yeah, a wonderful that should be just this before we end the discussion yeah. i would like you to give a message to our young uh, you know viewers as to yeah. what on the personal level what can one do to curb this menace what yeah. is it that we even can even do? a literate person can become trafficked you know you never know yes so yeah. main thing is that we it doesn't mean that we don't step out of our house and we sit inside the house 24 hours and we don't we cannot do that we have a job we have our society we have to go and have an entertainment fun what we need to know is we need to be aware that such things exist in the society and such things will take place i mean sometimes or the other in here i think at least as a woman i feel every woman every girl must have faced an uncomfortable situation yes. either in the bus or somewhere yes. you know yes. so we need to be aware and you need to create the sixth sense in you that there's something wrong with this whole person who's talking to me okay you need to need to be aware so you have to be aware with the laws what are the, what are the laws if you if you're going across the country don't merge don't merge out without reading the laws how can you go where is the help available which portion where, where exactly whom do you contact uh, in the embassy abroad mm -hmm. so you need to know everything and carry your tools with you so in case of difficulties in case of problems you are able to contact at least some nodal ops who will help you right um, thank you very much uh, madam for being with us here today i am sure this is a very meaningful discussion for a lot of people uh, who are viewing uh, the youtube channel and uh, be, come back to us with any questions you want or any research help you need in this i am sure uh, you know dr mulya dutta will be very happy to yeah, thank you sure. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you.